So here we have a very interesting device that uh, connects nicely to the gas heater uh, you might have seen on my channel uh, recently. You can find uh, that video somewhere in the card above. This is the safety gas valve that's included in uh, barbecues, stoves, other gas appliances where uh, blowout protection uh, is desired. So this is the case uh, on your stove. You turn the burner on, the gas flows, the flame either goes out or never gets lit, and the gas keeps flowing and eventually your house blows up or you asphyxiate. So this is what the system is intended to do, but the solution to this is very analog and elegant, but using an interesting uh, physical effect. So uh, the way you could do this, you you could have a PCB with an IC with a microcontroller that processes a thermistor, blah, 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 and some shutoff relays. But it's much more elegant and cheaper, of course, to have a very simple integrated system. So what we have here uh, is a thermocouple, firstly. Uh, these are usually uh, K-type thermocouples. So they're output uh, of the voltage that they produce based on the thermoelectric effect or uh, Seebach effect uh, is only 50 millivolts. So a tiny voltage uh, they're capable of producing when directly in the flame of a burner. But as you can see, they're using this uh, very thick uh, copper pipe uh, to make their electrical connection. When I saw this first, I was thinking, okay, is it some kind of like bulb thermostat with some kind of expanding gas? I mean, it uses a, a copper pipe instead of a wire, but they call it a thermocouple, so it must be something electric, but then it, it actuates a valve, but how can that have enough energy to open a valve? But this actually achieves uh, that goal. So uh, the way this is set up in a device, this is uh, close to the burner inside the flame, uh, this connects to the incoming gas uh, input. This goes to the output. And then on this system, we have a valve that uh, you can turn uh, to set high and low gas, but it also has this push in function, which is uh, important to the functioning of this device. So when you're starting a barbecue or a stove that has this type of system, you have to press in the valve and hold it there for some time. And then you either light a match or you press the piezo uh, igniter and you keep the button pressed for 10-15 seconds because if you release it too early, the burner just turns off. So what's happening inside here in this area, you have a normal uh, valve that's actuated just by turning to restrict the flow, but then there's a secondary uh, valve built into this rear area. So if we unscrew the back part of this, and you can see here, uh, this is actually an electrical connection and not a liquid or gas connection. There's one contact uh, on the point here, and you can see this insulating uh, little washer, and then the other contact is the outside uh, copper pipe that's uh, connected to this washer when it's tightened down. And as we can see here, what's fallen out is the uh, valve, whoops, the valve and uh, coil that is buried in here. So we can see here, there's a nice seat where this uh, rubber uh, gasket uh, compresses down and restricts gas flow to even enter uh, this valve body. So any gas coming in first has to pass through this valve. And as you can see, it's uh, sprung action. So it is usually closed uh, when not energized. But as you can see inside, we have some coils of copper wiring uh, that have an interesting shape. And the electrical contacts are actually on this mating surface area. So we have one contact in the middle, there's a little bit of uh, insulating paper or plastic here, and then we have this outer ring that connects to the other end of this tiny coil. And as you can see, uh, when it's not under power, nothing happens. The uh, valve just springs back out. But once it's connected to our thermocouple, uh, the inside contact here uh, mates to that uh, inner surface and the outside washer is lying on this outside ring and it makes an electrical connection to the thermocouple. So when this is installed and uh, this is uh, screwed on and connected to the stove, once the burner is lit and heat is produced uh, on this tip, it creates uh, 
up to 50 millivolts of power and uh, conducts that uh, power through these super thick copper connections, which uh, allow it to be a very, very low impedance connection uh, to power this tiny coil. So uh, this coil here, of course, since we're working with such a low uh, voltage, it also has to be super low impedance. So if I connect the multimeter here, uh, to this outer ring and to our uh, inner contact, you can see that uh, we have a very, very small, usually it measures at 0, 0.0 uh, ohms or 0 0.1. So we have a very, very minimal uh, resistance uh, on this coil. So even those 30 or 50 uh, millivolts of power are enough to have an effect on this. Uh, I won't call it a solenoid, it's more like a latch. So the reason why this valve, of course, you have to push it in to initially actuate it. And you can see uh, in the middle, there's this plunger that moves when you actuate the valve. It initially uh, depresses this washer and lets the gas flow. And uh, you have to hold the valve compressed for the burner to heat up the thermocouple. And this little coil uh, inside here is far too weak and the electrical current generated by the thermocouple is far too weak to actually pull this solenoid uh, this distance in, but it can act as a latch that once you push it and then electrical current is generated, it has the strength to overcome the spring tension and hold this washer in to allow gas flow. So uh, the way it works, it's uh, inside here connected to the thermocouple. You push the valve in, this allows gas flow, the burner is ignited. If it's burning, it heats up the thermocouple and when you release this valve, the electrical uh, current flowing through this coil is strong enough to keep the uh, valve retracted. Uh, once the burner is turned off or it uh, blows out or the gas uh, somehow stops uh, 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 feeding the burner, the heat disappears from the thermocouple, the electrical current stops, and the spring bounces back and seals uh, the valve from letting any gas flow. So I'm going to set this up for a little different demonstration. We'll be back in just a second. So to demonstrate this effect, I've set up our uh, thermocouple and valve and uh, coil solenoid unit uh, into this little vise. So this is the end that was connected onto here. I actually 3D printed a little adapter part so the contacts would mate nicely. So we have our thermocouple here that would be usually inside the flame of the burner. We have our uh, valve seat here. The little solenoid is hidden inside uh, this nut uh, that is making two contacts to the thermocouple, one through this thick copper piping uh, on one side of the coil and the other side there is an insulated wire going through the middle of this pipe also to the thermocouple and this rubber seat would seat on the uh, input end of the gas connection and would seal uh, any gas from flowing unless it is either manually actuated uh, by pressing the uh, button or when the burner is hot and burning, it is held in magnetically, but it doesn't have the energy to pull itself in. It needs to be manually activated and then it will latch if the burner is hot. So let's test this. Uh, we can just get a gas flame uh, to heat the thermocouple as you see now in its uh, cold state. Uh, the uh, valve does not latch, the spring opens it up, no problem, no gas is flowing. So uh, once, uh, let's say we hold this in to let gas flow to light the burner, the burner uh, slowly heats up this thermocouple and as you can see, uh, already the temperature is enough to keep it in. So uh, even if I sort of jiggle this a little bit, the electrical current that is being produced by the thermoelectric effect is holding uh, against the spring pressure and is holding the valve open. So let's say this is now the burner has been blown out. It's not heating anymore. There is obviously a little bit of a thermal delay, but when we cool the thermocouple, it pops out the valve and stops gas flow. So we can see now it's been cooled 
uh, the valve is actuating only under spring tension and is in the sealed position. So if we activate our stove again and we manage to light our burner to heat up the thermocouple, uh, it is already in its uh, retention state. So uh, it does take some time. There's a lot of uh, thermal inertia on here and it really takes a minimal amount of current apparently to fight against the spring tension. So it does take a while just on its own to release. But if you imagine this a barbecue or a stove, uh, if the burner is blown out, if this manages to stop the gas flow within, I don't know, 20 seconds a minute, that's still perfectly fine and perfectly safe. And it's amazing how this simple system of just a thermocouple and this tiny uh, coil of copper wire is able to produce such a robust safety system uh, to protect against uh, blowout. So you can see here it is still written. Okay, so now it just popped out. So you can get uh, a feeling of the time it takes to release. So let's try it again. So now that it's cooled down, you can see it is uh, closing under spring tension. If we heat it up again, you can see it takes a very little amount of heat actually for, so I was just heating it under the gas flame for maybe five seconds and already it is enough to maintain this spring tension. And you can see if I try and pull on this, I am able to release the spring, but it's still hot and generating this electrical current. So the spring again is being latched in. If I pull on it, okay, so I can feel it actually losing power. See now it is very loose and not generating enough current to hold it in, but already this amount of heating as you can see is enough to latch it. So yes, I can pull it to release it, but when I push it back in, it still retains and you can see if I rapidly cool it, uh, it is released immediately. So just one more time, let's take a look at this. So I've heated it. That's probably enough uh, thermal energy to latch it. Our valve is open. Once it cools, the spring is released, electrical current flow stops, the solenoid is not latching anymore, the valve closes, the burner is shut off, it's been blown out, no harmful gas is being released into your home. So thanks for watching this video. If you found this concept uh, interesting, do like and subscribe. I have many more interesting technologies I will be disassembling and explaining on this channel. Uh, if you're interested in the gas heater, uh, this idea sprang from, you can find that video in the card above. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.